Good morning all. We'll move to the second module of Geotechnical Engineering 2. These are the contents as per the KTU syllabus. It includes lateral earth pressure which has three divisions at rest pressure, active pressure and passive pressure. Then comes Rankine's and Coulomb's earth pressure theories and the effect of surcharge on earth pressure, inclined backfill on earth pressure, water table on earth pressure and a few numerical problems. Then you have earth pressure on retaining walls with layered backfills as well and we'll discuss and stop the few numerical problems. Now lateral earth pressure, if you remember the first slide that we were discussing on in uh, the introductory class, I believe I've added this figure which shows a retaining wall which retains earth to one side. So in short, this retaining wall is acted upon by what we call as a lateral earth pressure. It means the soil which the wall retains offers a force onto the retaining wall. In this case, it can probably be to the right hand side, which means the soil is trying to move the retaining wall out of its body to the right side. So that is called as an active earth pressure, which we'll try to deal with in detail in subsequent classes, but still. That's one kind of a lateral earth pressure, an active earth pressure, which means the soil is trying to move the retaining wall to this side. Now, the structures which are influenced by significant degree of lateral earth pressure includes one is a retaining wall. Then you have sheet pile, basement walls, coffer dams, braced excavations, etc. Now, you might be familiar with almost everything except I... I I doubt if you're familiar with coffer dam. Coffer dams are nothing but structures which are built on river banks. I mean, not river banks, river beds, while constructing the pillars and piers. So, coffer dams' function, predominant function, is to divert the water and to make sure that the construction activity is carried out in dry soil. So, that's one example of a uh, structure which is influenced by a significant degree of lateral earth pressure. Sheet piles are, are another example. Sheet piles are nothing but uh, it, it, it looks like the asbestos sheet or aluminum sheet or aluminum sheet that we used to have for our roofing material. It looks like that but still its function is to retain soil. They are sheet in nature but they are piles which means they are inserted into the ground and sheet piles are used when you have to have excavations carried out. For instance, when you are working on a metro project, if you have to have an excavation carried out, what you do is you insert the sheet pile into the ground and then you excavate the soil from one side. Uh, if you're interested, when you go to master's level, you'll have to start, you'll have to deal with the design of sheet piles. Nonetheless, for BTEC semester, all you have to know is that sheet piles are nothing but some kind of structures which retains earth pressure and braced excavations are also quite similar now retaining walls are provided when uh, the slope of the soil mass is steeper than the safe slope due to space limitations if you travel by uh, the again the example that I used to quote for almost every geotechnical phenomenon is the Adimali Munna road or the Kautamangala Munna road so while we travel in that direction you can see slopes which are quite steeper and to hold the steep soil mass you would be forced to construct retaining walls at some stretches of the road uh, and it keeps soil at different elevations and for the same reason it may pose a tendency to slide to the lower side for instance in this picture uh, the tendency of the soil mass is to slide to the right hand side or the lower side so this results in the lateral earth pressure generation. The magnitude, the direction and the position of action governs the design of a retaining structure. So if you are a civil engineer out on the site and or in the design office, your challenge will be to design the retaining wall in such a way that it is safe against the uh, lateral earth pressure offered by the soil. So you need to have an idea about the magnitude the direction and the position of the uh, lateral earth pressure. Now, designers, depending on the method that they use, retaining walls can be of a rigid nature or a flexible nature. 
uh, it depends on certain criteria which is unfortunately not included in your syllabus and uh, the types of retaining wall like I mentioned in the first slide active earth pressure is an example types of earth pressure I beg your pardon types types of earth pressure you can you can divide into three at rest active and passive active was uh, explained in the previous slide with the photograph at rest and passive are also divisions of uh, lateral earth pressure to understand that clearly we'll take an example here you have a retaining wall here and to the right side you have soil mass so if that soil mass is not subjected to a lateral movement which means it's not having a tendency to move the condition is called at rest case which means it's at rest it's resting there for example a bridge abutment uh, is an example is a classic example of a at rest condition and since the soil is not moving or it doesn't have a tendency to move it's called an elastic equilibrium so in any case when the soil is in elastic equilibrium it could be in a at rest condition or at rest pressure and the second case is the one that we have discussed just in the previous slide it's called an active case an active case means that you have the retaining wall original position was vertical and it was retaining the soil to the right side but the soil has a tendency to move to the left side which means it tries to stretch horizontally and the retaining wall tends to move away from the soil now in this case it's called a backfill when you have lateral earth pressure and the retaining wall the soil that you have here is called as a backfill because that's the material that you use to fill the back portion of the retaining wall so in short in active condition what really happens is that the retaining wall tries to move away from the backfill and the soil is said to be in plastic equilibrium or at the verge of failure so active case soil mass tend to stretch horizontally and the retaining wall moves away from the backfill and the soil is in plastic equilibrium the next case is a passive case which means the retaining wall tries to move into the soil you have the soil here or the backfill and the retaining walls tendency is to move into the soil now this uh, usually happens when the retaining wall is made to move into or made to get retained into the soil using tie rods or anchor bars so there are constructions which uses tie rods or anchor bars or nailing mechanisms which attach the retaining wall into the soil so in such cases the tie rod or the anchor bars have a tendency to, to pull the retaining wall into the soil so the soil mass gets compressed horizontally then stretch so while it was stretching is it was active now it's getting compressed and it's passive and the retaining wall moves into the backfill soil is again in the same plastic equilibrium which means it's at the verge of failure now for you to understand it in a much practical and broader perspective i can have an example here i have i've written pas active earth pressure p0s at rest pressure and pps passive pressure now an active pressure is analogous to this a cork bottle getting opened which means it was under pressure and when you use the opener to open the cork bottle what really happens that is that there's a pressure release right so this release of pressure is quite comparable to an active earth pressure where the retaining wall moves away from the back wall it's getting relieved with the pressure and the second case p0 oop at rest condition pressure at rest condition is just like a coke bottle at rest it doesn't have a tendency and it's at rest and the third one of course is the reverse of pa passive pressure is when you try to squeeze the coke bottle though this is not practical for a glass just assume that this is a can of coke bottle not a can i mean not a glass material just assume this is a can right so when you try to compress a can it's under passive pressure which means it's 
trying to get trying to get compressed so that's analogous to our passive case where the retaining wall moves into the backfill a better representation for us uh, to put things in perspective for engineering graduates uh, this figure would explain now if PA is marked here P0 is marked here PP is marked here so PA has the least value which means even with a very small value of pressure release active case is mobilized right just like this you just have to give a slight opening to get this coke bottle released quite similar to that pa is quite low p0 the magnitude is a bit more higher and pp is the highest among po and pa and pp right so you have the maximum magnitude here at pp and the movement is marked in the x-axis magnitude was marked in the y-axis and the movement is marked in the x-axis so in passive earth pressure the movement is towards the backfill or the retaining wall tries to move into the backfill towards the backfill whereas the active case shown here the movement is away from the backfill and at rest case you don't have a movement it's at the origin right you don't have the movement and it's called at rest now there's another important term which comes into picture it's called as a coefficient of earth pressure now to explain that I have this picture here let's assume that this is a slope uh, and you have considered a soil element there that soil element at any depth let's say h uh, height h or depth h below this uh, ground level is acted upon by a vertical stress of sigma v which we are all familiar with sigma v is a vertical stress it's nothing but gamma into h which we have already covered where you assume a column of soil which is one by one in plan and h height in depth so the total weight is gamma into h into one into one and the stress sigma v is nothing but gamma into h so that was discussed in the previous semester sigma v is gamma into h but you have a sigma h here which means it's a horizontal stress or it's nothing but the lateral stress or the lateral earth pressure that we are talking about now sigma v when is equal to sigma h i mean gamma into h sigma h is equal to k into gamma h or in short the coefficient of earth pressure is the ratio of a horizontal stress sigma h to the vertical stress sigma v so from these two equations you can see that k is nothing but sigma h by sigma v sigma v being gamma into h where h is a height so coefficient of earth pressure will have just like the pressure p coefficient of earth pressure k will also have three terms k a k zero and k p coefficient of earth pressure for active case for at rest case and for passive case we'll discuss that in the next video